is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known but things change when you're down in the valley don't lose faith for you are never alone for the god on the mountain he's still god in the valley when things go wrong he'll make them right the god of talk of faith when we're up on the mountain the talk comes so easy when life's at its best but it's down in the valley of trials and temptations that's when faith is really put to the test for the god on the mountain he's still god in the valley when things go wrong he'll make them right the god of turn with me to 2 Chronicles 2 and verse 1, and I will be going to 2 Chronicles 3 and verse 3. <laughs> 2 Chronicles 2 and verse 1, and then 2 Chronicles 3 and verse 3. And Solomon determined to build a house for the name of the Lord and a house for his kingdom. Second Chronicles 3 and verse 3. Now these are the things wherein Solomon was instructed for the building of the house of God. And I'm going to stop right there. I'm not sure what to title this, but... I'm also going to be going to 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 1 here in a moment. But what I was really looking at in those two verses was how he was determined to build the house of the Lord for God. He was doing it for, if I can find that, I'm going to here in a second. Um, did I write it down? Yeah. First Corinthians 8 and verse 1. But what I was really looking at was how we are to be determined to build our temple for God. And he won't dwell in an unclean temple. And then we go to three. The Lord is going to convict us. That's how I took that verse. The Lord's going to convict us of things as we start to grow. He was telling Solomon what to put in there for him to come down and to dwell down here on earth. And... If Solomon would have put one wrong thing in there, God wouldn't have been able to come down and dwell. 
So, I got to looking at it, we're to be determined. Just like Ruth was with Naomi. She said, where you go, so I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Where you die, I'll die. Where you're buried, I'll be buried. And she said that she was steadfastly minded. And Naomi seen that. And with God, we are to be determined and we are to be steadfastly minded. That way he can come and he can dwell with us. That way whenever we are walking toward him, he can walk toward us. But if we ain't taking heed to what he is telling us to get rid of, then he ain't going to be able to come and be as close as we want him to be. But 1 Corinthians 1 and 8 and 1 says that knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. Knowledge says, okay, I'm going to do this because it's a good moral. Charity, for God, says, I'm going to do this because God told me that I need to do this for him in order for us to get close. And charity will edify through that. And then knowledge will get mad. Knowledge says, no, I won't do that for you, but whenever I go out with my buddies, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to try to be alive, but I'm not listening to you. And then most of the time, if you've just got knowledge and you don't have charity to back up your knowledge, you're not going to be edified through God. And knowledge goes out, does what it wants. Charity will stay at home, and charity will read God's word and get to know God for who he is. And charity will sit and will meditate. That's what I was doing. I think it was yesterday, or it was Sunday. I got up early, and I was sitting, and I was meditating on God's word, and that's what I was meditating on was knowledge and charity and how it works together because without the charity part your knowledge is worth nothing because you're going to know but you're not going to do charity applies it to the life you study to show thyself approved you go and you sin no more you be who god says for you to be whether you want to or not but charity wants to charity has a desire and charity loves god for who he is and God will love you for who you are. But God said that if we love him, we will keep his commandments. And with the convictions, there's a lot of times I find myself, I get convicted of something. And then I stick with that conviction. I go through with it. I don't do it again. But then sometimes I slowly slip back into it. And then I catch myself and I go back to where I need to be. That's charity. Charity sees and it's like, no, you edified yourself. You wanted to go with God. You wanted to go straight toward the mark. What's what's going on? Why are you letting go? Why are you letting down? And then it's like, oh, because of this person, because of that person. I just, I thought it was okay. You can't justify it. You have to continue with your edifying. You have to continue with God through everything. There's a difference between loving God and just doing it because it's right. Because when we love God, God says we need to communicate. God says you need to take this time out of your day and go be with me. Stay away from the electronics. Stay away from people. Be with me and I will show you. And there's a lot of times we get in our life and we're, like Dad said the other night, we just feel like we're going in a circle. We don't know what to do. There could be something they're blocking you. could be a conviction that God's convicted you of and you haven't fully stepped into it yet and let go of it. And it was like I was telling the kids in Sunday school, I said, because I actually taught on this Sunday, I said, that's like when I'm in school and what I'm doing is... Most of the time I do science first because I love science and how it brings out like the DNA and it brings out all kinds of different stuff like that, hair follicles and all kinds of stuff. But when it comes to history, I know nothing about it. I just read it and I do what I'm supposed to do and most of the time I forget about it. But with science, I can remember the stuff in there that I actually like. See, God's Word, I like everything about it. 
and I apply it to my life. And that charity allows me to study to show myself approved. And that's with everybody else. You gotta look at it and you have to, it's different opening it, reading it, shutting it. But whenever you sit down and you read it, and you slowly read it to comprehend it, because there's a lot of times I can just read through it and I'm done. But when I sit down and I actually read his word and I slowly take it in and then I find something that just clicks, I sit and I meditate on it for like an hour or two. And I begin to apply it to my life. It's been about like a week or something like that. I read this, but I didn't grasp a hold of it. But and then I sat down and I got to thinking about it. And then I began to study it out. Like, Dad, today, it was just out of nowhere. He's like, you got something. And I was like, I, I would like to have next Tuesday because I don't know. I mean, I've got something. I would like to study it out more. But then I sat down and, because his dad said that he probably won't be able to be here, I said, well, I'll go ahead and study something if you don't get to be there. And then I sat down, and it was all just coming to me, and I texted him back. I said, I'll preach. I said, it's fine. But edify means to restore by building or to rebuild to repair. So most of the time we feel like we're all the way up here and then we have to go right back down and restart from where we was because we either have a brick out of place or we didn't do this right. Like Solomon, whenever he was building the temple, he had to put it the same exact way that God said or he would not have dwelled in that temple. 